Basic concrete is made up of three simple ingredients, sand, cement, and an aggregate like stones or gravel. Whenever you buy a bag of concrete mix like Quickrete, that's what's in there. They've just got a very specific ratio of each of those ingredients. But there's no ready-made white concrete mix in my area and it's expensive to get it shipped online. What I did find out is you can get white versions of each individual ingredient which should combine to make a good white concrete mix. Let's do some tests and find out. On Modern Builds. Man, I can't believe I forgot my intro. Before I could mix up any concrete, I needed to make some forms. I'm making one foot by two foot forms out of three quarter inch thick melamine. Here, I'm cutting all of the pieces to size with my track saw. The side walls are about an inch and three quarters tall and I'll be making inch and a half thick pours. The track saw is super convenient because I can batch cut all of my pieces to two feet long. I'll be cutting the ends of the walls later, but this is a great way to get a lot of pieces cut fast. After installing my two side walls, I could mark and cut my end pieces to length on the table saw. If you don't have a table saw, don't worry, you could use a circular saw, a miter saw, even a jigsaw to do this same task. A table saw is just convenient for sneaking up on the line to get a really tight fit. I chose to use pocket screws to attach my side walls to the rest of the melamine form. This is a quick and easy way to assemble everything, but totally not necessary. With everything secured, it was time to move on to the next step, which was applying a coat of paste wax to the form. You'll want to apply a relatively thick coat and then let it cure for about 15 minutes before buffing it out. Doing this is going to allow the concrete to release from the form way easier. It's also going to help when we install our silicone bead around the corners of the form. I used black silicone caulk, that way it was easier to see, but you can use any color you want. This is going to seal the form and make everything completely watertight. I'm using this grout tool to add a chamfer to the inside corners of the form which will be translated to the concrete pour. Applying the paste wax to the form allows the excess silicone to wipe away from the form which I can then use a vacuum to clean up. And that's how you make one good concrete form. The only problem I had was that I needed to make a lot more for all these tests. I made sure to grab my RZ mask before mixing any of my dry ingredients. Whenever you mess with cement, there's a lot of dust that kicks up and you do not want to breathe it in. The RZ mask is super comfortable and perfect for this job. For my first concrete test, I'm going to be using one part cement, two parts sand, and three parts pea gravel. I drilled holes in the bottom of the cups that I used to scoop this gravel out with so that I could rinse it out in the faucet so that it didn't stain my white concrete mix. Each of my tests are going to have different ratios of these three ingredients to find out which one gives me the strongest result. I mixed all of my tests the same way. First, I included all of my dry ingredients and mixed those up so that they were thoroughly combined. Then I added my rocks and mixed one more time before adding any of the water. And to make sure I filled my forms, I did a double batch of all of my ingredients. Whenever you're mixing up a batch of concrete, you want to add your water slowly, that way you don't accidentally add too much. The consistency that you're going for is like super chunky peanut butter. You obviously want it to be liquid enough that it'll fill all the corners of your form, but solid enough to stay packed together. After filling up all of my forms, I grabbed a couple of hammers and I made sure to knock out all of the air bubbles so that I had a good, strong pour. You can achieve the same results with a random orbit sander with no sanding pad against the form. I figured since I was doing all of these tests, I should have some sort of a control, so I did one pour with original Quickrete out of the bag. I did my best to mix this to the same consistency, but I did make the mistake of overfilling my form compared to the rest of the pours. This gave me a thicker slab, which ended up adding strength to it. I guess it's just a rookie mistake. My bad. I let my concrete cure for two days before I released it from the forms. The slower you can let your concrete cure, the stronger it's going to eventually be. I was really excited to see just how white these concrete pours were. They really looked great. 
The top face and the edges of these concrete pieces were super smooth and looked amazing. The one thing I would do differently though was the chamfer with the silicone caulk. In the past, I've used a round fondant tool, which I'll leave linked below, and that works way better. Really quickly, I'd like to give a big thanks to this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Do you need a website? Did you know you could build it yourself? Well, with Squarespace you can, and you need zero website building experience. I promise. Squarespace's library of built-in designer templates look incredible right out of the box. All you need to be able to do is upload images and edit text, and you're well on your way to an amazing website. But Squarespace isn't just easy to use. You can create an incredibly robust website using their service as well. Whatever you need a website for, Squarespace has got your back, and they're willing to prove it too. If you go to squarespace.com forward slash modern builds, you can build out an entire Squarespace website without putting in any of your credit card info. Then, once it's time to sign up, make sure and use the code modernbuilds at checkout for 10% off your first site. Thanks again. Now back to the video. Here, I'm lining up all of my concrete pieces so that I can get a hammer and knock them in half. I was really curious to see the distribution of the aggregate once I could see a cross section of each of these pieces. I was happy to see the concrete wasn't super brittle, except for this third Ooh, test. That one broke a lot easier. You can see I had to hit the quick reap piece a little bit harder, but I think it's just that added thickness to the slab. I was really excited to see how awesome this ended up looking. Now my plan wasn't initially to use this pea gravel. My Home Depot just didn't have a white aggregate available. But now it's got me wanting to do some sort of live edge concrete river table using the pea gravel. So I can agree with you, hitting the concrete slabs with a hammer is not a very accurate test. So I wanted to do something that was a little bit more measurable. I fully expected to stack some weight on these concrete slabs to see them break in half. Then I could measure how much weight it took. But to my surprise, this concrete was way stronger than expected. It supported my whole weight with no problem. All right, so if this concrete can hold up to 90 pounds plus my 180 pounds, we're just gonna quit testing it and call it strong. That'll just be our new baseline. Now I probably don't need to say this, but don't try this at home. I know standing on a stack of weights, being balanced on a concrete slab that's balanced on a couple pieces of scrap melamine isn't very safe, but hey, I'm not a scientist and I'm doing my best with these experiments. After curb stomping my quick reap pour, it was time to test the batches that I made from scratch. And I was really happy to see that they supported the weight plates with no problems. The first concrete test piece performed better than I expected. It handled my weight plus the weight of the plates with no problem. It wasn't until I started trying to bounce on the concrete that it finally gave way. After that, I tested my second batch and it could hold my weight, but not for a sustained period of time. After a second, it gave way. My third batch of concrete performed the worst on this test, just like the hammer test earlier. I think not having enough aggregate just makes it crack way easier. I am so glad that we got consistent results across the board showing the three-part aggregate, two-part sand, and one-part cement mixture was the best performing all around. And so now that I know what the best mixture of ingredients is, I wanna take this test one step further. In the next test, I wanna use these white aquarium pebbles that I picked up instead of the brown pea gravel. I wanna make the whitest possible concrete, that's why I'm using this aggregate. I just had a lot of the pea gravel, so that's why I used it during the strength testing. I know we've already found out that you don't really see a lot of aggregate at the surface of our pores, but I'm curious whether the pea gravel was adding any bit of tint to our mixture. For consistent results, I did my best to mix this to the same consistency as my prior tests. The one thing I forgot though, was to make sure my tripod was tightened. The second test I'm gonna be performing is using this concrete bonding adhesive instead of water in our mixture. This is a liquid fortifier and it was suggested by my friend Mike Clifford from the channel Medustrial Maker, who I've collabed with in the past. He's a little bit of an expert when it comes to concrete and GFRC, so I wanna take his advice whenever I can get it. I allowed these concrete pieces to set in their forms for two full days before I released them, just like in my previous tests. 
and you can see the contrast in the aggregate due to the moisture that's still in the concrete. Check it out. After letting them sit for one more full day, I knocked the concrete pieces in half so I could do another strength test. And unfortunately, the ultra white concrete did not perform as well. It could support the weight plates fine, just not me on top of it. Whoa. I had to hit that a lot harder. The good news though, oh. is that the concrete I made with the liquid fortifier right, was the strongest of all. Yes. Not only could I stand on it with the weights, Whoa. but it didn't break until I right. basically jumped on it. That's strong, holy cow. It was interesting to see that even though the aggregate settled to the bottom of the form, it still was really strong. And this ultra white concrete Whoa. looked amazing. Even though it wasn't as strong, it still performed decent and looks so cool. So here you can see the difference in color. It's about a full shade off. The smaller piece is one of the first concrete pours where the bigger piece is the ultra white. All right, so this video has been a ton of fun, but what did we learn? Well, we learned that the best solid mix is three parts gravel, two parts sand, and one part cement. If you want a solid all around mix, that's my recommendation. If you're doing something where you need a little bit of extra strength, the concrete fortifier definitely made a noticeable improvement, but I would say it's probably not necessary, especially if you reinforce your concrete either with rebar or fiberglass. One last thing that I would note is that the white aquarium rocks did not perform as strong as the pea gravel, and I think that's just because the rocks themselves were a little bit brittle. I guess at the end of the day, there's just a little bit of a trade-off. You get a slightly wider end result, but you sacrifice on strength just a little bit. Maybe just add some concrete fortifier. So I really do hope you enjoyed this experiment video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That way this video just gets recommended a little bit more. These experiments are not what I typically do. Normally I build full furniture, DIY, room renovation projects, all kinds of stuff. So make sure and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell if you are new to my channel. This is my second video doing experiments. My last one was where I made wood stain out of coffee. And if you haven't seen that, it'll be linked down in the description. I really appreciate all the support over the last month or so. My channel is getting so close to hitting a million subscribers which has been a goal of mine for almost four years now and it seems crazy that I'm about to get there. So I hope you have a great rest of your week and until next time this has been Modern Builds. Bye everybody!